Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the com video. We're going to be talking about the RX 480. It's just a few days now until the GPU emerges onto store shelves. And for those asking, yes, we will be reviewing it. Uh, it's probably going to be a day or two after retail for us. But we will be getting a review sample or buying it, whichever way it comes first. But in this video, we're going to be talking about a whole load of information regarding overclocking results, 3D Mark, more images of the card just generally released, the actual overclocking tools, some information regarding that, and just, well, a massive update in general. Now, I do want to point out that there is more background noise than normal in this video, and that's because at the moment I am reviewing some hardware and I have an open motherboard. It's not the RX 480 I'm reviewing, it's uh, CPU. So I have an open test bed right next to me, so it's a little noisier than normal, but we're going to do the best we can. I guess the first thing we should start with is the simpler things, and that is the appearance of the RX 480 on Newegg. That's right, it's the first e-tail, at least the first I know, to list the 4GB model of the RX 480. It's going to cost about 200 US dollars. That's not really surprising at all. We knew that that was going to be the case. Now, one thing that has been a bit confusing is the absence of custom cards. So custom cards obviously would be for partners who decide to not just go with the reference heatsink fan. So for example, they might go with a tri-fan setup, they might decide to you know, change the entire look and aesthetic of the card, it's totally up to them. But they are not going to be available in launch, so that's led to questions like, well, okay, well, when are they going to be available? We have seen a few images leak of custom coolers that are kind of in the works, but no solid date. Well, it's not going to be too long into the future, supposedly mid-July. And then we're going to get custom RX 470s, which is going to be the end of July. And just a little after that, early August, is going to be the RX 460s. So if you're really trying to push the cards with maximum overclocks, and you don't mind waiting a week or two, which to be honest, if you're not a reviewer, and you don't have to buy a, a GPU right now, for example, let's say you've got a fairly okay GPU right this second in your machine, something like a, an GTX 760 or a 770 or whatever, then you probably would be okay to wait a couple of weeks and go with a custom cooler, but obviously it's your money, so do whatever you like. Now we can thank Sapphire for the next leak because they accidentally made the RX 480 page online, just for a moment. And this was caught by videocards.com. What they are showing is a couple of things which are already pretty much known um, with the RX 480. For example, we've got improvements of first day driver support, Radeon software, all of that stuff is like, well, we knew that anyway. But what is interesting is that the AMD Overdrive has been renamed. It's going to be rebirthed into Radeon Watman, which I guess makes sense from a very geeky point of view. I kind of like it. We've already seen what the overclocking tool does. It allows you to set different states based upon um, the power draw of the card. So, for example, you could have a 1300 megahertz clock and then maybe set a 2.1 gigahertz memory clock, whatever the hell you want to do, and obviously alter the fan accordingly. It's pretty much the next evolution of AMD's overdrive technology. Whether pros or power users are going to use it, or they're just going to stick with uh, MSI Afterburner or what have you, it's unknown. But I guess it's nice that AMD are working on the software. Now, I do want to touch on overclocking, because there's a lot of conflicting informations. So, as you know, or you probably know, the standard clock speed that the Radeon reaches is around 1266 megahertz. I say around because some retailers are going a little higher. Some RX 480s, however, are failing to go beyond 1350 to 1400 megahertz. For example, PC Games Hardware Team, um, they've said that they simply cannot get it over 1400 megahertz. They're basically crashing. At, a, at the very high 1300s and this seems to be echoed through some people while others are just overclocking through the roof and getting to 1600 megahertz. The good news is the RX 480 is stable with no thermal throttling present. 
So what that means is that you won't have some issues which have affected certain other cards, which I won't name, and basically will downclock on a whim. So for example, you might have set 1300 megahertz, but it might clock down to like 1150, depending on the ambient temperature in your case and the luck of the gods, which means that you can start getting some problems with that. The GPU power draw is around 112 watts, but if you start cranking up to the 13 to, 15 to 1400 megahertz range, it starts increasing the power draw pretty darn snappily, and you can start running to around 130, 140 watts. Now, I would never recommend that you buy a piece of hardware with the assumption that you can clock it to the sky. There have been a couple of instances where this has not been the case. For example, back in the day with the Celeron 300s, you were able to overclock the E4300 from Intel, the Venices, the Athlon 64 Venices also overclocked really well, the Q6600 from Intel overclocked well, the 2500K typically overclocked well, and there are a couple of instances with GPUs as well. But as a general rule of thumb, don't ever buy a piece of hardware thinking that you're going to overclock it to like, let's just say the default clock speed's 1250, and then you're going to assume that you're going to get it to 1500. As my own personal rule of thumb, I buy a piece of hardware expecting 5% minimum, and with a typical of 10%, that's been my level of experience. On the other hand, sometimes I've managed to get 20%, 30%, on the other hand, I've sometimes got 2%, and we've been given review samples, or I've bought cards, or trying to overclock for friends, and sometimes you just cannot get the memory, for example, to budge, or the memory will clock to the sky, but the core just will not do a damn thing. And back in the day, I did things like trying to replace the heatsink fan and all of this stuff, and what I find is that if it's really that bad, if it's not going to budge more than a couple of megahertz, you're probably not going to get anything out of it. Now, I'm not trying to be negative on the RX 480. At the end of the day, even if it only goes to 1350, the card is still screaming value for money. I just want to inform you all, don't buy a piece of hardware, whatever that piece of hardware is, with the expectation that it's going to be able to clock to the sky. Yes, there were reports of 1600 megahertz, but as I said, it's silicon lottery. Moving on, however... And the cards are getting pretty toasty. They're getting to 70, 80 degrees. Now, what that could potentially mean is that individuals are not pushing the fan speed up high enough. Uh, after all, so while some folks are saying that they've done X, Y, and Z and mentioned, for example, the ambient temperature of their room, a lot of individuals are not saying that with the leaks. So, because we don't have all of that information, you're just going on... A, speculation and a whim and we also don't have a large enough sample size to draw a conclusion of what does what so my advice to you is once again if you're planning to push the overclocking as high as damn possible wait for a couple of weeks and get a custom cooler or just see what the overall state of affairs is for the rx480 if on the other hand you don't really care about that and maybe another 50 or 100 megahertz would be nice but it's not the end of the world, then by all means go and buy one at launch. A couple of e-tailers are also starting to release videos of the RX 480, however some are being pulled simply because they're kind of breaking NDAs and all of that stuff, so AMD, Sapphire and the like are probably not too happy about it. What is quite evident is that the 3D Mark scores have been fairly consistent with a few outliers here and there. It would appear that you're still looking at an average of around the high 1200s as a basic overclock, uh, or sorry, I'm sorry, as a basic clock speed, whereas a maximum on average is around 1400 for the clock speed, which is not a slouch. And for those wondering about Crossfire, it's scaling incredibly well. You're looking at an almost two times increase in performance with Firestrike. The problem is, obviously, Fire Strike is not necessarily the same as all of the other games, so we'll have to wait for more testing. And a couple of days ago, we did go through some further leaks from some videos that once again have been pulled offline, simply because I imagine that AMD are not too happy about the fact that you've actually seen the damn thing run. But Doom was playing at what people were reporting to be about the same speed as a 980-ish, um... And GTA, the benchmark, is hitting around 60 in the not super, 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 super 
uh, complex scenes, and World of Warcraft is obviously doing its thing. The big issue with all of this, at the end of the day, is that there are some reports that the reason AMD are being so stringent on the reviews is because the, those who are using the cards right now are not using final drivers. Now, I can't verify that, but it possibly would make sense that they're trying to do the last round of optimization. With that said, it gives us a good indication of where we're going with the performance. So, it could be that a final driver might make a difference in three games with 3%, or it could be that the, the retail driver, the final driver at release, could make a 10% difference on all games. We just don't know. My final piece of advice to you, if you're still listening to all of this and thinking to yourself, what the fuck do I do? Do I buy an RX 480? Do I buy a 470? Do I just go with a 1070? My advice to you, if you're in that boat, don't buy anything, just wait a couple of weeks. My advice to you is if you can afford a 1080, just buy a single card, because you're probably going to have a better overall experience with a single card. With that said, two RX 480s is going to be cheaper than a 1080, so if you don't mind potentially a few issues here and there and you want to save some money, or you've already got a free sync monitor, or maybe you don't have the money at the first to buy two up to buy two rx 480s you can only buy one but next paycheck you could buy two and let's say you're buying a bigger monitor then as well then by all means go with the 480 another thing is if you wait let's say a couple of weeks it's possible that the supply chain for the 1080 and the 1070 will be well less shit to be honest because at the moment it's abysmal and i'm seeing some retailers i mean uh a, individual, I won't mention his name, actually emailed me to show me EVGA's website a couple of days ago, and it was showing that certain NVIDIA cards, for example the 1070, the 1080, were limited to just a couple of cards per customer, while other cards were not. So there's definitely some supply shortages, but me telling you that is not exactly a revolution. So, you know, up to you. I would say if I, if I were in your position and you weren't sure what to do, wait a couple of weeks, it's not going to kill you. There's not going to be any amazing new cards out. The best situation is that you're going to get to see the aftermarket coolers. And in fact, from your point of view, it might make more sense to see the reviews than to see what the aftermarket coolers are going to do for overclocking and stability and overall speeds then make a decision after the drivers have matured a couple of weeks. That's always what I personally do with new graphics cards, especially when I was not doing YouTube or doing reviews and I was just an average customer. Um, that's just personally how I do things because I'm more cautious. But if you've got the money, just do whatever you want. That's what I say. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Um, I don't know if there's going to be much more RX 480 news. We will be reviewing the card, as I said. Currently, I'm reviewing a CPU. I did the Project Scorpio analysis yesterday, so do go ahead and check that out if you're interested in PC gaming. I put in, sorry, console gaming. That would make more sense. I put in an exorbitant amount of work into that. Into that, it took me about a week with all of the, with all of the uh, research and analysis and the video editing. So do go ahead and check that out. It would mean an awful lot to me. If I remember, I'll put a link into the video description. And finally, thanks for watching. But um. Yeah, hopefully you'll stick around. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye, my friends.